Resident Alien fans, you're in luck because this winter break, I was assigned with writing a holiday story. To make it more interesting for myself, I figured why not write a Resident Alien fanfic? So now, I present to you Harry's Christmas Adventure. Twas the night before Christmas and all was calm. In a cabin by the lake, an alien relaxed in his home. Residing at a nice distance from the nearest human, Harry Vanderspiegel sat at his dining room table, devouring a slice of his favorite food, pizza. He finished the first slice, but as soon as he took a chomp out of the next one, he was interrupted by a little knock at the door. The alien begrudgingly got up from his seat and opened the door. While still chewing, Harry is greeted by two children, Sahar and Max. Harry appears as a middle-aged male to most, but Max can see him for the alien that he is. Harry, we need your help, the little girl Sahar stressed. Santa's in trouble, we saw his sleigh, the little boy Max exclaimed. Well then, why don't you two go save him yourself, and I'll go back to enjoying my pizza, Harry suggests while attempting to shut the door, but Sahar stops it with her foot. Santa crashed in the forest on your property, Sahar states. Besides, we're just two kids, it's dangerous out there. But if we're escorted by an alien, nobody can hurt us, Max argues. Fine, we can take a quick look at this so-called Santa's sleigh crash. Harry complies while putting on his jacket. He then shuts the door behind him, and the kids lead him towards the crash site. The mix of snow and gravel crunches under their feet as they enter the quiet, magical night. After a few minutes of beginning the quest, the trio ends up at the crash site. The group was hit with a wave of shock. Santa's sleigh really did crash in the woods on the shoreline of the lake, and half of it was leaning towards the water. To the kids' horror, Santa was unconscious in his sleigh. Their eyes both simultaneously popped up their heads at the same time, in the horror of the sight. Harry, you have to help him, Max screamed as the two kids dragged him out of the sleigh. The moment after Santa was safely evacuated from his sleigh, his majestic vehicle succumbed to gravity's pull and fell in the lake. Look what you little brats did, Harry spat at the kids. How is Santa going to deliver all the presents without a sleigh? Max panicked. The sleigh is useless if Santa's dead and can't use it. Harry, can you fix him? Sahara escalated. Santa had lost a lot of blood. He was a giant red eyesore, with it being hard to tell where his bleeding stopped and infamous red clothing began. I only have a few bandages left in my cabin, and he's going to need more help than this. He needs a doctor. A real doctor in a doctor's office, Harry explained. Well then, call Asta, quick, before it's too late, Sahar ordered. Harry anxiously called Asta, and she rolled up to the crime scene within minutes in her pickup truck. She threw the door open and jumped out with a giant first aid kit, getting straight to work. Getting there just in time, Asta was able to stabilize Santa, and they all brought him back to Harry's cabin to recover. Santa was now bandaged up and laid propped up across the couch. The rest of the group stood concerned, trying to make sense of the situation. So you just saw his sleigh fall and found him like this? Did you see who shot the sleigh down? Asta struggled to question, flabbergasted from the experience. I saw nothing. It was these two who saw it, and they came to bother me while I ate my pizza, Harry blamed. Christmas is going to be ruined if Santa doesn't deliver the presents, Max cried. The group momentarily went quiet and continued to think. Harry, your spaceship, you can use it to deliver all the gifts for Santa, Sahar excitedly suggested. That's a great idea. Come on, spread a little Christmas cheer. You can be Harry Claus, Asta encouraged her alien friend. No, Harry Claus wants to eat pizza in his cabin away from children, Harry retorted his hands already gravitating towards the pizza box that he abandoned on the table when the kids knocked. Please, Harry, you're the only one who can help. Try to care about someone else for once. You're going to make so many families happy. It would mean a lot to me, Asta pleaded. Fine. I'll start prepping the spaceship. Harry begrudgingly surrendered. The team rapidly got to work. Asta and Max began sorting presents from Santa's sleigh while Sahar prepped the flight plan for Harry. Harry ran back and forth from his basement bunker and garage to prepare the spaceship. After working extremely hard for what felt like hours, the group finally finished, reuniting in Harry's yard. Harry opens his garage door, and out hovers a small spaceship. Wait, Harry, before you take off, I have something for you. Asta yells while running up to him and hands him Santa's hat. Harry stares at the hat in his hand and then sighs as he puts it on. Testing comms, Asta speaks into the mic on the table in Harry's dining room, part of the impromptu headquarters they set up. All the pre-flight checks were completed and Harry began to take off. All right, Harry, your first house is just a few miles down the street. You need to give the green present address to Tommy, Sahar instructs. Hey, I know Tommy, Max interjects. There's a lot of green presents. Oh, wait, this one here? Harry's questioning is interrupted by a correct present spawning in the passenger seat next to him. The spaceship swiftly arrives at the first child's house. Harry lands on the roof of a thud. So, should I knock on the door or smash a window? Harry asks. 
You gotta use the chimney, stupid head, Max taunts. Oh, okay, you weird humans with your bizarre traditions, Harry concludes as he begins to shimmy down the chimney. Harry plops out of the fireplace, clutching the gift with a soft thud, spreading a small amount of charcoal just outside the threshold of the fireplace. The alien then tiptoes over to the Christmas tree and sees a plate full of cookies. He begins to devour all the cookies on the plate, his crunches filling the comms. Harry, don't get distracted. The cookies can wait, Sahar scolds. Uh, no, cookies are essential, Harry retorts while stuffing the unconsumed cookies in his pocket. With that, he places the gift underneath the Christmas tree and heads back up the chimney. On to the next house, Asa cheered Harry for delivering the first present. Harry travels to the next house not too far away. Luckily, the ride was smooth since the quiet, magical night had clear weather. Nothing but the odd, transparent, misty cloud in the sky. Harry descended the chimney just like the house before. This house wasn't very different from the previous. Harry snaps the cookies from the plate, dumping them in his pocket. This house had two presents. One for a child, but then another smaller one, seemingly addressed to a pet. The wrapping on the pet's present began to unravel, and catnip got all over Harry. The catnip attracted the recipient's pet, just as it was starting to affect Harry. Everything started to look a little funny to Harry, and his reflexes began to slow. He stumbled across the house's living room until a giant red Christmas ornament caught his eye. He then began to bat the ornament around the house, but then the cats saw it, and they began to fight each other for it. The fight intensified when Harry accidentally knocked over the Christmas tree. Harry, what's going on? Asta questioned. I feel funny, was all Harry was barely able to mumble out. Harry, if you don't get out there right now, I'll eat your pizza, Sahar threatened. Her threat was sobering enough for Harry to prop back up the tree and head back up the chimney. Luckily, after the catnip incident, the rest of the night went mostly smooth. With Asta, Sahar, and Max's help, Harry was able to deliver every present to each child before sunrise. Harry returned in his ship to the cabin just as the golden rays of the sun peeked over the mountain and steam started to rise from the lake. Harry entered the front door of the cabin carrying two gifts. He placed them on the table. Looks like Sahar and Max somehow made the nice list, Harry shared as he flung his Santa hat off. Harry, we got a present for you while you were gone, Asta teased as Darcy walked in holding boxes of pizza and pie. Harry's face lit up at the sight of her and his favorite treats. The team sat down at the table and had a wonderful Christmas feast, full of Harry's favorite foods, pizza, and pie. Maybe Christmas isn't as dumb as I thought, Harry Claus remarked as he chomped on a slice of pizza and enjoyed the happiness he felt from watching the kids open their gifts. The alien's heart grew bigger as he learned to love the spirit of the holidays. The end.